What a joy to be gathered together today, our 175th anniversary, St. Luke Lutheran Church, Cabot, Pennsylvania, 175 years. Unbelievable, unbelievable. We're gathered today under the theme from Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, the words far more. Whether you have lived your life at St. Luke like our honored guests, like those whose shoulders we stand on. Those who have made this place what it is, the giants of the faith that sit before us, our honored guests, or whether you've only been at St. Luke a short while, God has done far more than all we could ask or imagine. As we've led up to this day, I have said to our leaders as we've been planning this, we couldn't have dreamed it this good. We simply couldn't have dreamed it this good. We're gathered today to give God our thanks and our praise Just a few announcements for you before worship begins this morning. Throughout any portion of the day, if you need a restroom, the Wilhelm House is open, the old school house is open, the patio doors uh, to the church are open there, the bathrooms just inside the doors if you need them. Any of those are available to you throughout the day. There is a schedule of events in the back of your bulletin today. If you hang on to this, The times and the locations of everything that's happening today is right here for you towards the back of your bulletin. If you want to keep that handy uh, and check that out along the way, that would be great. If at any point you have a question, if you have a need of any kind, whether it's small things or big things, our elders are wearing white name tags that say elder on it. Guys, would you just raise your hands? If you're an elder, would you wave your hand? You don't have to remember their faces, but those are the guys wearing those white tags. Direct your questions to them if you need anything throughout the day, or certainly uh, Pastor Brian, Pastor Jared, and myself. Pastor Brian is going to give you all of the details about lunch at the end of the service. So once the closing hymn is done, we're going to have you sit, and we're going to give you instructions about what comes next. So we'll handle that when that time comes. But I just want to give you this one piece of instruction first. We have a very special group of folks with us today. Those who are uh, 90 years young and younger are sitting here among us. We're going to let our honored guests go first to lunch. So if you would, uh, the rest of you all sitting here after the service ends, if you would help us break down uh, the chairs, we're going to bring out racks to put those back on. We're going to let our honored guests get over to lunch first, and then we will all make our way over there. I have a few introductions to make for you this morning. We are blessed to have lots of guests with us, the guest preacher Uh, Our district president is with us. So at this time, I want to welcome forward our district president, LCMS Eastern District President, Chris Wisher, uh, who wants to give greetings on behalf of the district to you. President Wisher, if you would. I lost you. There you are. Good morning. morning. Hopefully you can hear me in the back. Brothers and sisters in Christ of St. Luke and Cabot, it's great to be here. I've been looking forward to this. They really have been uh, for a number of months when Brian first told me about this. So it's just great to be here. It's hard to believe it's here already. And just a little bit of information. Three days, 13 hours, and about 30 minutes from my retirement. Now, oh, what a way to, to end it. Right? What a bang. This is a great bang. Woohoo! <laughs> So this is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, you look at your history and histories of most churches, and oftentimes the story is told by pastors. And pastors are very influential, key leaders of congregations, so I'm never going to dismiss pastors, being one myself. Pastors are very important. As we always would say, healthy leaders uh, raise healthy congregations. So you have to have leadership, beginning with the pastor and others. But the story goes beyond pastors, and particularly at, at, at St. Luke, uh, you have your school, you have your principal, you have your teachers, your faculty, your staff, uh, you have also your other staff, your other pastors on board here, and other people who are here as well. Uh, just a great staff. You haven't had those all through the years, but through 175 years, you've had tremendous leadership along the way. Not only in terms of called staff and professional paid staff, But I insist that the story isn't just about the staff and the pastors. 
Uh, it's also about the lay leadership of the congregation and the strength of the families in a congregation. It's kind of a give and take. Congregations support families, families support congregations. You have leaders, everything from trustees to elders to council to education board to evangelism, and it goes on and on and on. That's the strength of churches, really. And that's where the story is to be told and to be celebrated this day. So thank you, not only the staff, the called staff and the professional staff of this congregation and school, but thank you also leaders for being leaders, being strong, influential people to lift up this congregation. Why? Because it's all about Jesus. That's what this day is about. Jesus who has sustained you, the foundation of our faith, the Lord, the Savior, the only Son of God who rules and reigns over the church and someday will gather us all together. It's all about him and your history and I pray that you will continue in this same momentum and strength as a congregation. That as the last song is we're going to sing this morning, I see, is lifting high the cross. That's why St. Luke is here, right? So on behalf of the congregations of the Eastern District, we have 120 other congregations. We also have eight other day schools and many, many also pre uh, education uh, centers as well. On behalf of all them, I just bring you my congratulations. 175 is a lot of years. That's a lot of years for a congregation. You're only one of two in this district, and I don't know how many in our synod that can boast and be praising God for so many years that he has sustained you. So congratulations. God be with you. Looking forward to celebrating with you this day. Thank you so much for being with us and for sharing your last moments with us. Not insignificant. Congratulations to you. Last moments as district president. I should have said that better. <laughs> My next introduction for you, let me just ask you a question. Is there someone in your life that when you hear their voice, you instantly stand at attention? Your back straightens, you stand up straight? I know for lots of you, that voice came from Pastor Barry for a lot of years. But let me tell you, that this next guy is that person in my life. When I hear Dr. Meyer's voice, you stand at attention. At the seminary, we call him Opa, we call him Grandpa. By far, by a large margin, the best preaching voice I have ever heard in my life. One of the most significant preachers in my life. I mean every word. Not trying to overhype it, Dr. Meyer, but truly. So, I'm pleased, pleased to introduce Dr. Meyer, our preacher for the day. If you'd come give us greetings. And finally, we have a former vicar, now pastor, back with us this weekend, Pastor Dagan Siepert. Welcome back to St. Luke. So glad that you can be with us today. Pastor Barry, Andy, welcome back. We're going to see you, hear from you in just a moment. Thank you for all you've done over the years for me and for all of us. We love you very much. With that... Dear friends, as we celebrate that God has done far more than all we could ask or imagine, I'd invite you to stand for the ringing of the bell as our worship begins. <laughs>
brothers and sisters in Jesus 175 years ago. Almighty God saw fit to draw together a group of Christian men and women into a congregation of believers in Cabot, Pennsylvania. In the years since, St. Lutheran, Lutheran Church and school has seen times of joy and sorrow, times of plenty and times of need. Countless baptisms, confirmations, weddings, and funerals have taken place throughout the years. Through it all, the love, and mercy of God has carried us through by the working of the Holy Spirit. As we gather on this joyous day, remembering all those who have gone before us who now lay at rest, we fix our eyes on the same source of forgiveness, life, and salvation that they did, our Lord Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord Jesus, and acknowledge you to be the way, the truth, and the life. Your blood has set us free from sin and death. We gather today as your forgiven children, heirs of eternal life. You may be seated for all. say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
bow our heads for a moment of silent confession. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us. We are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from you, the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or change. We praise you this day for the innumerable blessings that you have poured out on St. Luke Lutheran Church and school over 175 years. We ask for your continued providence and protection, that guarded by your hand and inspired by your Holy Spirit, we might continue to confess Christ boldly, that all people might receive the good news of his death and resurrection by faith. We pray in his precious and powerful name. Amen. This time I'd invite the president of our congregation, our head elder forward, as well as Pastor Barry. Why don't you turn and face these people that we both love? Brothers and sisters in Christ, in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, when a pastor has served one congregation for an extended period of time and then retires from ministry, congregations that desire to recognize and continue that pastoral relationship with the retired pastor may confer the honorary title of Pastor Emeritus upon him. As we thank God for the ministry that has happened at St. Luke since our last anniversary celebration we acknowledge the significance and the impact of your ministry, Barry, among us here at St. Luke. In recognition of Pastor Barry's service among us and the work of God through him for our benefit, St. Luke Lutheran Church has voted to confer the title of Pastor Emeritus on Pastor Barry. Barry, hear the word of the Lord. From Jeremiah chapter 3. And I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And from 1 Timothy, if you put these things before the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of the faith and of the good doctrine that you have followed. Having fed us with the word and sacraments of God faithfully, and desiring to welcome you back into the life of our congregation, both as a member and to minister to us as there is opportunity, we, the members of St. Luke Lutheran Church and School, confer upon you the title of Pastor Emeritus in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. If I say too much personal, I'll never make it. I'll just simply say it's, it's good to be back. For Andy and I, it's good to be back. Uh, <clears throat> life has been good, tiny bit busy, but, uh, but life has been good. But to see, to see St. Luke, the church, the school, and how well God has continued to bless you and how you have responded to that with such faithfulness. I, I said to Andy a while back, I said, St. Luke has found its legs, and uh, we rejoice in that. There's just nothing greater that we could see and experience than to see the healthiness and the joy and the strength here. And all praise be to God for that. Enough. The word of our Lord. My privilege to share that with you this day. From Joshua 4. When all the nations had finished passing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Take twelve men from the people, from each tribe a man, and command them, saying, Take twelve stones from here out of the midst of the Jordan, from the very place where the priest's feet stood firmly. Bring them over with you, lay them down in the place where you lodge tonight. And then Joshua called the twelve men from the people of Israel, whom he had appointed, a man from each tribe. And Joshua said to them, Pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan. Take up each of you a stone upon his shoulder, 
according to the number of tribes of the people of Israel, that this would be a sign among you. And when your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you? Then you will tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant. When it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. And so these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. And the people of Israel did just as Joshua commanded, taking up the 12 stones out of the midst of the Jordan, according to the number of the tribes of the people of Israel, just as the Lord had told Joshua. And they carried them over with them to the place where they had lodged, and they laid them down there. And Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant had stood, and they are there to this day. Those 12 stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. And he said to the people of Israel, when your children ask their fathers in times to come, what do these stones mean? Then you will let your children know Israel passed over the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. This is the word of the Lord. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, a basis of so much of the blessings that have been yours and ours over all these decades. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, the depth, to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now, to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Be we rise to the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood have, has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let's remain standing as we sing.
In the name of Jesus, amen. Please stay tuned. Can you hear me in the back there? Pastor Ben told me to turn this on, and I'm not very good with the gizmos. Um, I was doing a Lutheran Hour rally once, and, and I said, can you hear me in the back? And, and an old guy in the back said, if I wanted to hear you, I would have sat in the front. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation to be with you on this great day. To the pastoral team, thank you. I want you to know that your seminary, your alma mater, is very, very proud of you. You've come a long way. Pastor Ben, for example, when he vickered, he vickered in the St. Louis area, right? What church? St. John's Arnold. St. John's Arnold. Uh, he was leading the service, and he was, he was at the altar, and he knew that there was something wrong with his lavalier microphone. And he turned and he faced the congregation and he said, there's something wrong with this thing. And the congregation said, and also with you. <laughs> we won't even get into the other two pastors. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad and we really are proud of you guys. Um, Pastor Barry and Andy... When I saw the digital copy of the order of service, I thought it said committal. <laughs> Which, by the way, you got a great turnout, but you got 100% of the alumni are here. 100%. I don't know how you communicated with them, but they're here. No, it's the conferral, and, and I didn't know how to pronounce that fancy word that you conferred on him. I thought it was emeritus. You know, like arthritis, bronchitis, gingivitis, and inflammation. And I thought this was an inflammation of old age. <laughs> it may be. Congratulations. We've known each other literally for decades. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to keep our friendship going uh, in, the, in this way, to be with, with you. Gather. Grow. Go. I like that. I really do like that. Gather. Gather. Some of the greatest temptations that come to the church, and they come to St. Luke's as well, is from American hyper-individualism. There's nothing wrong with individualism, but in America today, Individualism is on steroids. I'm going to do what I want. This is the way I am. You see it in the news. You experience it in life all the time. Interesting thing. When you read the New Testament and you come across Y-O-U, you, it's almost always plural. It's almost always plural. And the great temptation of Satan is that we hear you and we think it's about me, I, individually. And I won't take the time, but we could play out all the damage that comes to the church and to our spiritual lives when we don't understand that you is plural. Like my Texas son-in-law says, all you all. All you all, gather, gather, gather. Grow, grow, grow in what? Grow in family health, grow the children, grow your career, grow your portfolio. Those things are not to be despised. But the growth is into God through Jesus Christ. St. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. And it is not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's all about growing into Jesus. 
Deuteronomy chapter 6. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. We've got it in hymns. Thee will I love, my strength, my tower. Lord, thee I love with all my heart. We gather together to grow into the Lord Jesus. And we're not done with that. And I know from my own experience, I got a lot more growing to do into Jesus. You know, one of the questions that take home from the sermon and the service is not do you know about Jesus? Are you intimate with Jesus? Are you intimate with Jesus? Gather, grow, and go. Go. That obviously is a great commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We get that. You've heard it a million times in your life. But it also means going into the community as an individual and as a congregation in school. It means going into the neighborhood. And in my experience, a lot of people think that, that going for Jesus means that you have to have some special training. I don't think so at all. I remember asking an older pastor once, that's when I was younger, and I said, Pastor, Pastor Temi, I said, you've got the most thriving congregation in the area. What do you do? What evangelism program do you use? And he had an Australian accent. He was from Australia, and he laughed at me. He just laughed at me, not with me, he laughed at me. And he said, I don't have an evangelism program. I just try and make the people feel good about their church. That's the evangelism program. You gather, you grow, and you go to wherever you go in your daily life and let the people you encounter know, yeah, I feel real good about my church. Let me tell you about St. Luke's church. Let me tell you about the school. Gather, grow, and go. Wait a minute. Gather, grow. You remember some years ago there was a popular song named the Macarena? <laughs> and I don't know how it went. Da, 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 da. I think this is a St. Luke Macarena that you have come up with. <laughs> Gather, grow. Go, gather, grow, go. Where are the musicians? Especially the young musicians. You, you can turn this into a, a, a song, the St. Luke's Macarena. Gather, you think I'm crazy? My wife does, she didn't come. Gather, grow, go, go, go. All right, cool. And what happens then? When you do the St. Luke Macarena, gather, grow, and go, your lives, individually and as congregation and school, are doxologies. They are praises to God and to the Lord Jesus. What a great text. Ephesians. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, According to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Now to him. The anniversary is not about St. Luke's. It's not about Martin Luther. Hey, last time I heard Martin Luther was still in his grave waiting for the resurrection when Christ comes back. It's not about anything except Jesus. Jesus who was born for us, died for us, rose for us. You know, one of the things in reflecting upon my ministry is that I don't think I always left people with the right image of Jesus. When December comes, we think of Jesus in the manger. Hey, he ain't there. He hasn't been there for 2,000 years. 
And then Lent comes, and think of all the Advents and the Lents that you've celebrated in all these years. You and those who have gone before you, those who will follow after. In Lent, we think of him on the cross. We picture him on the cross. He hasn't been there for 2,000 years. And when Easter comes, I know that the pastors and the musicians prepare a wonderful Easter service. And, and you can kind of simulate what it was like for the first disciples to go to the tomb and find that he's not there. But you know what? If we would go there next Easter, if somehow you could do a travel thing and be there, the angel would say, what are you doing here? He hasn't been here for 2,000 years. You must be Lutherans. You're not quite with it. <laughs> and when, when, when Easter comes, we have this standard exchange, you know. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. That always rings a little hollow to me. I mean, it, it, it's true. I'm not saying it's not true. But it doesn't quite resonate with me 100%. You know what resonates with me more? Come, Lord Jesus, Maran Atha. At the end of Revelation, he says, I am coming soon. And then the reply is, come quickly, Lord Jesus, Maran Atha. Because Jesus isn't in the manger. He's not on the cross. He's not by the tomb. He's not even on the Mount of Ascension. Right now, he is Seated at the right hand of God, which means that he is exercising all the power of God in the interest of the church, in the interest of St. Luke's. That's the way to imagine Jesus now. At the right hand of God and soon to come back. Those are not grave sites. Those are resurrection sites. And when he comes back, Putin, drug dealers, evil people are going to get their due. And we would too accept that we're hiding ourselves in Jesus. Jesus, thy blood and righteousness, my beauty are my glorious dress. Its flaming worlds in these arrayed, with joy shall I lift up my head. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly. Are you looking at these photos that we're getting from space, from the Webb telescope? Yeah, are you? Are you? Are you awake? <laughs> are you smelling the food? I'm not an astronomer, but those, those things blow my mind. Not much of an explosion, but they, they blow my mind. <laughs> wow. Now, you, you've all seen what the, the, the photo called Earthrise, right? Where in 1968, the astronauts were on Apollo 8 were circling the moon, and on, on an orbit, there's the Earth rising. And... and William Andrus, the astronaut, took the picture. Okay? So you all familiar with what I'm talking about, the picture of Earth rising over the moon. Are you? Yeah, okay. <laughs> He's able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. That is the first time, 1968, December 24th, 1968, that is the very first time that mankind saw the home that God made for us. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, David, Solomon, the prophets, the apostles, Martin Luther, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, FDR, they never saw the home that God made for us. You and I see it. Don't ever, ever complain about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are living in a time of spiritual blessings that no generation has ever had before. Wow. He is able to do far 
more abundantly than all that we ask or think. Where is Jesus now? He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's exercising the power of God. You might say, well, I wonder how he's doing. God moves in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. And at the right hand of God, he is hearing our prayers. He is hearing our thoughts. How many times don't I? You probably do too. What am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about this? You know, how's, how's, this, how's this doctor's appointment going to turn out? Now that I'm retired, I've got a new hobby, collecting doctors. <laughs> I, got, I got five of them, five of them. How's this going to, you know, how's this going to turn out? Kids, how's this going to turn out at school? This thing that's bothering you at school, how's it going to turn out? He hears what we think. And he relays it, according to the Bible, to the Father, because the Bible teaches us that Jesus at the right hand of God is talking to his Father on our behalf, but he is also helping us in ways that we cannot begin to imagine. Just as people in many generations did not realize the, the great universe that we live in, so you and I have no clue that he is doing far more abundantly than all that we can pray and even think. According to the power at work within us, that's, that's, that's what happens in church. That's what happens in devotion. That's what happens when you, you think about the Word of God. And I, I'd like to know if there's anybody here who has not had the experience that when the Word of God comes to you, there is something about it that, that calms you that encourages you, that, that changes your outlook. I think we've all experienced that. And if you haven't, I certainly hope that you will. The Word of God works. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Almost done. I started as president of Concordia Seminary 18 years ago. And I had, and I regularly have coffee with my cousin, John. John was a vice president of HR for Imes Dog Food. John's a wise man. And when I started this job, he said, pick goals, pick goals for the time you are president. How am I going to do that? I just started. You know, I don't, I don't know what the job is. It took me years to figure out what the job was. He said, no, do it. Pick goals for your tenure. Never change them. Stick with them. And I did that. And what a blessing that was. Because my gyroscope always evaluated everything that was going on in campus and in church by the goals that I had selected. What I'm saying is, the St. Luke's Macarena, gather, grow, go. Keep that in the forefront of your mind, individually, as family, and as a congregation, because that will guide you into wonderful blessings in the future. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. We share our mutual woes, our mutual burdens bear, and often for each other flows the sympathizing tear. From sorrow, toil, and pain, and sin, we shall be free. And perfect love and friendship reign through all eternity. Remember, the St. Luke's Macarena. Amen. Can you tell now why we have competitions at the seminary of who can do the best Dr. Meyer impression? <laughs> <laughs> it's a real thing. I did not win that, nor did Pastor Jared. Opa, we love you. Thank you very much. I'd invite you to stand as we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess together. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. May we run the hand of glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Can you be seated? From the earliest days of our church body, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, operating parochial schools focused on training children to be disciples of Jesus has been a core part of who we are as Lutheran Christians. At St. Luke, we continue in that tradition as one of our primary ministries is St. Luke Lutheran School. It is but one school among thousands just like it, a part of the largest Protestant parochial school system in the United States. God has richly blessed our school with generations of faithful teachers to lead his children to know and to love him. And so today we acknowledge all those who have served in our school ministry in any capacity, as teachers and staff members of any kind. I would invite any of you who have served as a faculty or staff member at St. Luke Lutheran Church to stand at this time, that we might give God thanks for your ministry to the children of our congregation and community. Would any former or current teachers, faculty, staff members please stand? Let's give thanks to God for these servants. I'd invite our current faculty and staff to remain standing as you've just had two days, your first two days of the school year. Now allow us to pray for your ministry. As we embark on another year of ministry in our school, I'd invite the current faculty and staff to stay standing as we pray God's blessings on your work again this year. We all pray together. Almighty God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Heaven and earth reveal your glory to us each day. We thank you for these servants who faithfully teach your children about the world you have made and for the greatest gift of all, your Son, Jesus. Bless their service as another year begins in our school. Grant that students would be protected and your love and grace might abound as they grow in knowledge of you and the world you've made. And the ministry of these teachers would be to your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd invite the congregation to rise as we continue with prayer. Far more than we can ask. That has been this congregation's hope for 175 years to go before the throne of grace and pray to our God as our Father. So let us pray together. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return again to dust and say, Return, O children of man. For a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday and in the past. For as in the night, the years of our life are seventy, or even by reason of strength eighty. 
So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants, and your glorious power to your children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. For the generations of your blessing to this congregation, we thank and praise you, O God. For those who have gone before us at sleep in the Lord, waiting for the day you will raise us all to eternal life. And for those yet to come, we give you thanks and praise. Bless them with your amazing grace that has brought us safe thus far, as we confess that your grace will lead us home as well. For the blessings from your hand that are far more than all we could ask or imagine, we praise you, we thank you, and we bless your name, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Brothers and sisters in Jesus, receive this blessing. Having eaten the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, may He sustain you in that true faith, now and to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. This time we invite our choir forward. Thank you. 
St. Luke Macarena. <laughs> Gather, grow, and go receive his blessing for you as you do that. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's stand for our closing hymn.